Oh, or are we going to have some, oh, there it goes. Okay, so welcome everyone to Bites with a Message Live. And uh, let me see if I'm on. Uh, let's see if I can change. And let me see if I can turn down my sound. All right, and post. Sorry, guys. So, okay, it looks like I'm on. Save. Okay. There you go. It looks like Oops. I'm on. All right. So, uh, welcome, everyone. And uh, today we're going to be, sorry it's, in the, it's during the day, and I would say good morning, everyone, from Pullman, Washington, and this is uh, Bites with a Message Live for the 26th of July, 2024, and uh, we're going to be in Job 16. Uh, and then, uh, next, next, uh, well, whenever God leads me to do another live, we're going to be in, um, uh, 17. So, um, so anyway, this is my bike ministry. It's called Bikes with a Message and I fix up for a low price. I also, uh, sell for a low price also. Uh, matter of fact, I uh, had a fix up uh what was it uh two days ago and i also had another fix up on a oriental guy a lady and uh told her the um uh, how my ministry came to be and and gave her a bible track and it was good um and then the other uh person uh it's a brother in christ that i go to church with I fixed up his daughter's bike, and uh, it was a um, Trek. Um, it was a, a small uh, girl's bike. Uh, I would say about a, it's a twenty inch, twenty inch tire bike. So, uh, so anyways, if you want to fix up or need a fix up, or a you want to buy a bike, you can. Buy from me, take a ride with Jesus. You can contact me at Martin P. Anderson. My phone number is 208 669 0456, and my address is 1155 Southeast Professional Mall Boulevard, Trailer 423, and I'm in Pullman, Washington, 99163. And my email is of Jesus 316 at at gmail.com. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Just choked on some saliva. <laughs> um, and so if you need a bike, you can contact me. And 10% uh, of the money goes to Mexico. And then uh, it goes to people that are in um, poverty or don't even have a home or any, anything like that. Uh, so if you want to help me get some money down to Mexico, you can contact me and I will fix up your bike. Or if you want to donate some money to me, uh, then I can make sure the money gets down to Mexico. Um, and I'm affiliated with a church down in Mexico. It's called Centro Shalom. And uh, I've been doing this for ever since, I think, was it 2014 or before that? Because I went down to Mexico on a mission trip with Resonate Church. So um, so if you want to help me with uh, Mexico, then you can, um, you can contact me and we can talk bike or talk the Bible or... You can donate to me uh, some money to uh, so I can send down to Mexico. And I make sure, am I right, Mom? Mm -hmm. I make sure it gets down to Mexico. Mm -hmm. He sure does. Yeah. And uh, so, anyways, um, 
nothing of my ministry. Uh, this is what's happening at the Crossing Church. Cro the Crossing Church presents. It's a jungle out there. Every day, our kids encounter questions about their faith. Did God create everything? Was Noah's Ark real? Why do I need to be saved? Can I really trust the Bible? At the Great Jungle Journey, kids will explore the answers to these questions and more as they embark on a great <laughs> adventure from Genesis to Revelation. As your children sail along on a fun jungle cruise, they'll stop at seven ports of call, the seven seas of history. Creation, corruption, catastrophe, confusion, Christ, cross, and consummation. Kids will discover how these events shape our world, and they will realize their need for a savior as they reconnect the Bible to their everyday lives. Prepare to swing into fun on the great jungle journey. And so, uh, this will be the last week I'm going to be announcing because I think the registration is closed right now. Uh, but you can contact the office at uh, the crossingmoscow.com uh, or you can contact them by phone, 208 808 882-2627 for more details uh, it's going to be at uh, uh, 715 Travels Way Moscow, Idaho 83843 um, and that's where the address is going to be and it's going to go from Monday, 20, uh, Monday July 29th through Friday August 2nd at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. every day and so if you want to you can get your kids into it um uh i think they may take i'm not sure if they take registration there on um latecomers i guess i'm not sure you can contact the office to find out more details about that so anyways that's what's going on at the crossing, and uh, so let's get started with uh, prayer first, and then we can dig right into Job. And so, you ready, Mom? I'm ready. Let's go for our journey. Okay. <laughs> so, Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for your loving kindness, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are the creator and I pray that you would help us with our journey through Job 16. And I want to thank you, God, for everything you've done. Thank you, God, for a sunny day. Praise you. Thank you, God, for the smoke. And, uh, and thank you for the rain that you provided, Lord, for uh, the firefighters. But also I thank you, God, for um, the harvesters. Uh, that they would have a bounty of, of wheat and barley. And I pray that you would just teach us now through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. And Tani told me that there was fires down at Kendrick and Julieta. Oh, okay. Yes. Some fields on fire? Or? Yes. Oh. From this last storm. So you guys need to pray for the farmers my son was was raised up on the farm and he knew what his dad went through whenever a lightning storm came through or a very high wind that put the the crops down yeah. flat on the ground oh yeah so just pray for those farmers yeah pray that they get their harvest in or else america is not going to have any bread that's right Seriously, and people survive on bread every single day. Yep. Including me and my mom. So, uh, so if you, and the reason that, that we're asking to pray, because God is the source of life. Mm-hmm. 
not yes. the source of death, the source of life. And so if God removes his presence from our country, all of our crops are going to burn up. That's right. All of our cattle are going to die. We're going to die. This planet's going to fold up. Um, yeah, so, so be praying, church out there, be praying, um, because we need to go to God for our, what we survive on every day, even our breath, <sighs> see, breath, because God spoke everything into existence, but I'm not God, say, I can't do that. I can mimic what he does, but I cannot make a rose from nothing. So, um, so we're going to be looking at um, Job answering his um, friends. Uh, but uh, we're also going to look at some videos on some human trafficking. We're also going to look at some videos on, um, uh, I think... I think we have some other videos on like false teachers or something like that. Uh, we'll we'll get into the study. So um, so anyways, uh, in Job sixteen one through twenty two, then Job answered and said, "I have heard many such things, uh, miserable comforters you are." All shall windy words have an end, or what rebukes you that you answer? <clears throat> I also could speak as you do if you were in my place. I could join words together against you and shake my head at you like really <laughs> so Galatians uh, 6 7 through 8 it says do not be deceived God is not mocked for whatever one sows that he also reaps for the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And see, eternal life, um, it means to know God, the source of life, to um that God will live in you. You're like, how is that possible? Well, if you die to sin, God's spirit will live in you. So we have two worldviews in our in our culture. Culture of life, culture of death. Now sin brings death. Because of what we read in Genesis uh, 3, that Adam and Eve was sinned. So if you want to turn to, um, this, is, this is where sin comes from. So don't be deceived, okay? Um, let's see. It's in Genesis 3. And I'm not going to go through the whole chapter of 3, but I'm going to hit on a point here. Um, it's in jo uh, Genesis, um, uh, Genesis 1 down to 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the beasts of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of the tree? So, tree. He's talking about the tree of good and evil. Okay. <clears throat> In the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, 
We may eat of the fruit of the trees. She's not talking about the tree, that the good and evil tree. She's talking about the trees of life. Okay. Like I said, there's two worldviews. There's two uh, interpretation interpretations of life. There's death. There's life. Okay. So, uh, trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. See, you know what the serpent did, right? He lied to Eve. See, and most people are are caught up in them lies today, even in our government, even in uh, because they believe a lie. They think that they are gods, and they can do anything they want because they look at. What God did, he can do anything he wants. And then they mim mimic that and they say, oh, I could do anything that God could do. Uh, not exactly. So, so do not be deceived now. And God will not be mocked. See, for whoever sows... That he also reaps. Okay. For the one who sows. To the, his own flesh. Will from the flesh. Reap corruption. But the one who sows. To the spirit. Will from the spirit. Reap eternal life. Okay. So people out there. Don't be deceived. If, if people say that. You came from a monkey. Or if people say that um, that you are related to a pine tree, or abortion is good, don't be deceived. Okay, or human trafficking of what we're gonna look at in this study. Don't be deceived. So. In Job um, 16, verse 5, I could strengthen you with my mouth and uh, silence, silence of, let's see, is that right? Solace. Solace. Solace of my lips uh, would uh, assured silence silence yeah yeah of my lips would a a surge a surge a, a, a surge a surge a surge a, a, no a surge a, 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 a surge surge yeah. yeah a surge uh your pain if I speak, my pain is not assurged. Uh, and if I bear, forbear, how much of it leaves my leaves me? Surely now God has uh, warned me out, warned me out, and He has made desolate all my company. Psalms one, um, Psalms one thirty five five through seven. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord, uh, what whatever the Lord pleases, He does. 
in heaven and on earth, in the seas and all the depths. He it, he it is who makes clouds rise at the end of the earth. Job uh, 16, 8 through 22. Excuse me. <clears throat> he who has a shalevers, is that right? Shalev, yeah. Shivered. Shivered. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I have a hard time pronouncing words, so. I don't know. I can't pronounce it. Oh. <laughs> well, is a, is, you're going to go on that to see what the word yeah. is? So, that's, let's look at that word. And I tried plugging in my my camera. I hope it doesn't go down on me. Shriveled. 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 So, uh, winked. Wrinkled uh, or contacted. So like this you, is like it, like an apple will shrivel down. Yeah. So this is what it is. So especially due to loss of moisture or old age. Like I'm shrivering. Yeah. <laughs> so am I. I got my, wrinkles. My my hands are shriveling. I got wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> See, I we all got wrinkles. <laughs> yeah, that's what, what you get for being old. <laughs> Shri uh, shriveled me up, which is a witness against me, and uh, my leanness. Uh, has risen up against me. It testifies to my face. He has torn me in his wrath and hated me. He has glassed, uh, glassed, gnashed his teeth at me. My adversaries sharpen his eyes against me. So he's talking about, he's talking to God and he's saying, this is what my friends have done to me. This is what, wow. Okay, I shouldn't say friends. My former friends has done to me. Because this is Job talking uh, to God about his his friends, you know. <laughs> Psalms thirty seven twelve. Uh, the wicked plot against the righteous and uh, gnash his teeth at Nash. him. Oh, gnashes. Gnashes his teeth. Then where's the, the G? The G is silent. Oh, the G is silent. My bad. So, um, at him. Job 16, 10 uh, through 22. Men have grabbed at me with their mouth. They have tracked me insolently, insolently on, oh no, insulted me, insolently, in, in, insolent, no, insolent, insolently, yeah, okay, insolently, he insulted, yeah, he's insulted. Yeah. See, it says they have struck me. Yeah. Insultedly on my cheek. Right. That means yeah. hit him. Mm-hmm. Uh, they mass them themselves against me, against 
uh, together against me, God gives me up to the ungodly and cast me into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease at his break, broken, uh, he broke me apart. So God used, well, God used Satan to, to break Job down. Now, God, Job did not mock God. He, Job is like, why is this, why is this happening to me? I don't understand. I, you know, but he didn't got, he didn't mock God. See, so, uh, he, he, he seized me by the neck and dashed me to pieces. He set me up uh, as his target. So he, God is, or Job is saying to God, this is what my, my former friends have done to me. See, but on the return, that's what happened to Jesus. Jesus, he was, he was his closest friends was his disciples and they still they they forgot you know they were asking him questions they but they weren't beating him like the Pharisees and Sadducees so his archers surround me he slashes open my kidneys and does not spare. He pours out my gall on the ground. He breaks me with branch uh, upon branch. He runs upon me like a warrior. I have sown, sought, sought uh, sackcloth upon my skin and have laid my strength in the dust. My face is red with weeping and on my eyelids is deep darkness. Although he is no, although there is no violence in my hands and my prayer is pure. See, Job, he didn't curse God. He didn't know anything. He was, I would say he was quite like Enoch. Enoch, he was blameless before God. He was he didn't mock anyone. He didn't mock God. He did not do nothing. So, and with Enoch, he was not because God told him. It, God took him. See, he was pure, but he was still born with sin. And he, the people were like, wow, that's a contradiction. How can he be pure when he was born with sin? Well, his motives were pure, but his body was it was was filled with sin. See, so <clears throat> um, so all earth covered cover not my blood and. Let my cry find no rest, resting place. Even now, behold, uh, behold, my witness is in the in heaven, and he who testifies for me is on high. 
My friends scorn me. My eyes pour out tears to God. See, he's crying to God. He's like, God, my friends, or my ex-friends, are doing this to me. And it's, it's painful. And see, Jesus knows our pain. He's been through it. Same thing with Job. Happened to Jesus, but a lot worse things happened to Jesus than Job. Jesus was crucified, and he died, and then rose again. So, out there, when people out there, or you people out there, Jesus knows where you were at. So, if you're in a Job moment, or a Job um, circumstance, Cry out to God, you know, because that's what Job is doing. He's crying out to God. He's like, my friends scorn me. My eyes pour out tears to God. See, he didn't mock God. He didn't. He was like, God, help. Do something with my friends. Convict them with uh, uh, convict them of sin and change their heart. Or get rid of them. I don't want this. <laughs> See, that's, that's sort of where I'm at sometimes in my life. I'm in a Job moment or a Job situation. I'm like, I don't know what to do. My situation is terrible. And it's almost like I'm saying, my friends have done this, but no one has done this. I, sometimes I'm in this situation and I'm worse, I'm my worst enemy. <laughs> See, so that's what Job is talking about. See, so scorn, this is the word scorn. I can bring it up. So scorn. Scorn. And it means feeling or believe that someone or something is worthless or this uh, uh this sub uh, smell. What? Like something's burning. I don't know. Anyway, um, or this picture ball, or contempt. Uh, so like, I wish, uh, I do wish to come the subject of scorn. So, which means saying that I'm worthless, I you know, so see what Job is dealing with? I mean, he's dealing with his friends doing that to him, you know, and some people sound like it feel like that, but sometimes people have to look, you pe people have to look in their past and figure out what, okay, what can I fix? God help me, please. And there's freedom when you go to God. That's what Job is doing. He is complaining to God for his friends. So, Exodus 2, and this is another, another thing of complaint. You know, another... Um, thing that the Israelites did. See? Exodus 2, 23 through 25. During those days, uh, the king of Egypt died. So, the what was the background of that? Okay. The first king 
that Joseph was under. He was a good king. He took care of Joseph. Matter of fact, he made him a second ruler in Egypt. And he, do you know what he called Joseph? Mom? Who? The king of Egypt. That was in oh. the time of, of Joseph. Uh, he called him a slave. No, no. He was, he was. No. He called him, he was second ruler. Oh, second ruler, that's right. And to the gave, king of Egypt. Yeah, and he gave him part of his land. Right. For, to, you know. And his name was? Yes. Um, Zephaneth Panea. Oh. And uh, hey, I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> if you look in the Bible, Mom. I know. I know. So I his, know the story of, of Joseph. Right, yeah. So um in the account of Joseph, or an account of of the passage in Exodus, um, or in Genesis. Um, the king of Egypt was, um, he was a good ruler. He was, a, he was an awesome ruler in Egypt. And so he made Joseph, uh, when he was sold into slavery, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. So he became, Joseph became, uh, second ruler in Egypt. He was called Zephaneh Paneah. And so it is a big mouthful. <laughs> Zephanaf Panea. Panea. <laughs> <laughs> and so this one, the one that, that was good to Egypt and Joseph, died. The people of Israel groaned because of their slavery. See, Israel came from uh, from Jacob, which was on the return, called Egypt. And they multiplied. And so they came to Egypt because of Joseph. Okay. So, uh, back on uh, 23 of Exodus 20, or Exodus um, 2. So, um... The people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. This is what Job did too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Therefore, or their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God. And God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with uh, with Isaac and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel and knew. See, they he they knew or he knew that they were in slavery. Mm -hmm. They remember he remembered his covenant, the covenant that the that he's talking about or what Moses is talking about in Exodus is the the slave the the covenant that that God made with Abraham and with Isaac. So Abraham the covenant is he was not gonna he was not going to let Abraham kill his son. Yeah. The covenant that he made with Isaac and Jacob. Jacob, the covenant, because Jacob, um, um, let's see, Jacob, the covenant that he had with Jacob was that he was going to have um, Joseph, but also another son which is Benjamin. So um 
So God saw the people of Israel and God knew. So I have some videos of some more slavery, but happens in the world. Okay. So this is on human trafficking. And this is uh, one of the test or what happens in human trafficking, which is slavery. Okay. Just keep in mind, look at what we just read and then apply it to what we are going to see now. Especially with Joseph. Because he was put in slavery. Right. Yeah. So. Until, what was it? He, he, uh, was he the one that, that said, per, uh, predicted, or not predicted, but no, no. told he, the king what he dropped? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why he became second ruler. Yeah. Is because he was able to interpret dreams. So, same with Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, here's the first video. One of the forms of trauma that when you really understand what people are going through and what is being done to them, um, if you believe in any kind of existential philosophy, I think it is as close to true evil as I have ever seen in my work with people who have been harmed by other people. And I do a lot of work in interpersonal violence. Every girl is at risk simply because they are a girl. We want all girls educated in the risks about relationships, just like we believe all girls should be educated and have knowledge about human trafficking. So they know what to do. So it's important to have that conversation with girls not just sweep it under the carpet, never my girl, never her. Uh, there's something unique about the violation of the body. And when I teach about human trafficking, one of the things I talk about is how the body is actually the scene of the crime. So because it is a violation of one's physical person through um, sexual behavior, there's actually no way to escape it. You can't get away, you can't wash it off, you cannot forget, you cannot get out, you actually take the violated body with you into your new life if you are ever lucky enough to escape human trafficking. So there's various ways that a girl can be recruited. A lot of uh, ways that we see is what we call boyfriending. So uh, the, the young girl uh, meets a guy who, you know, she describes as her boyfriend. Um, guy can build trust and then um, he can start to demand things of her. If you loved me, you would do this. And she will 100% believe it and describe him as her boyfriend. But in reality, he is pimping her out. And um, that's probably one of the major ways. And, you know, sometimes they're too afraid to say anything because of judgment um, from parents and people that are close to them. What would they say? And so for me, it's such a painful but passionate piece of work. I'm always shocked when I realize how few members of the community actually know that human trafficking is happening underneath their very noses. So through our strategy, we're looking at uh, prevention through education. So uh, partnerships with the school boards are really important. Letting parents know, letting kids know, teachers, educators. So that is what happens in human trafficking. Okay. This is some uh, more people that were affected by human trafficking, I'm hoping that my tablet, dang it. Okay, just a sec, guys, I gotta get back my tablet. It messed up on me. Mm. Okay, so this is another, um, another person's story of human trafficking. Just a sec, guys. I'm trying to get rid of some of this stuff. Relationship. Hmm. He became my boyfriend. I eventually got kicked out of my house Just a sec. Uh, for bad behavior, and I moved in with him because he's like. There we go. 
when I was working in a movie theater in high school in Greensboro, North Carolina, I met a 40-year-old man who was a projectionist at the theater. We began a intimate relationship. He became my boyfriend. I eventually got kicked out of my house uh, for bad behavior. And I moved in with him because he's like, you know, we're already dating. You could live with me. After living there a few months, um, he asked me to be a part of his art project. He was like, you could be my number one model. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll be your number one model. So the pictures were more innocent in the beginning, and then they became more sexual. And I was forced to do unthinkable things. He did drugs. Uh, there was times I'd wake up. I didn't know what had happened to me. Uh, and I'd be naked on the kitchen floor. He's like, oh, you were just sleepwalking. And I believed him. My chains were invisible, but they were so strong and they were so long lasting. There's this huge misconception with human trafficking that you're taken somewhere. It looks different. There's so many different faces, which means we have to work harder than what we're already doing. So that's another one. See, and I do have one more video, um, if my tablet doesn't mess up, <laughs> um, of another one. She survived. She was a survivor. Straight up. Um, Amazing story of survival and one that allows us to see just how easily a young girl can become a victim of human trafficking. Immediately when I got in the car, I knew something was off. Simone Miller was only 16 when she was kidnapped and trafficked by a man she had just met. He was just like, um, I'm a pimp and you're my hoe and I'm going to take you somewhere. You're going to be given instructions on what to do and running is not an option. She was taken to a hotel where other women were being held. Simone says the man who told her he was a rapper when she first met him warned her if she tried to escape, he would kill her mother and her grandmother. If you anybody knows me, like that's like my weakness, you know, because like my family is all I have. As days went by, Simone was desperate to get out of this situation. What can I do? <sighs> And I just like played along and I, I had him thinking like, I'm okay with it. You know, I put on this red lingerie. The pimp let his guard down and when he took a shower and left his cell phone on the bed, Simone made a quick phone call to her mother. And I said, mom, and she said, baby, where are you? And I said, I don't know. I don't know where I'm at, mom. She just said, tell me what you see, Simone. I said, I... I'm like looking out the window of this hotel. I said, I see like a 7-Eleven. She's like, okay, what else do you see? I said, I, like a, I don't know, a church's chicken. She's like, okay, okay. Somehow with that brief description, her entire family hit different locations, searching for Simone until they found her outside of a 7-Eleven. Her captor was inside buying cigarettes, unaware his victim was about to be rescued. All I could think was when this man gets out of the 7-Eleven, it's going to be trouble. Despite everything he put her through, Simone protected him, telling her family he wasn't the man who kidnapped her. I still know that it wasn't right what he did, but I got in the car with him. You know what I mean? And I just didn't want, I didn't want them to kill him in front of me. And I kept saying, no, that's not him, that's not him. It's been many years since that horrific experience. Simone is now a crisis interventionist at Team Project, a nonprofit that helps survivors of human trafficking. It's healing. Subconsciously, I'm healing by helping. Such a strong young woman. Now, you may be wondering what happened to the... Oh. Oh, man who took Simone while well, her family let her let him go the night that she was rescued he was later killed in an unrelated incident Alex Christine I'll send it back to you the team project does amazing work I wonder where that was at okay so see what sin does where was that happen? I have no idea I know it was Fox 11 yeah well anyway see what sin does if my tablet doesn't mess up. Ah! Okay, just a sec, guys. 
So, yeah, I know, huh? <laughs> so, anyways, but this is our hope, people. This is everyone's hope. My hope is Jesus Christ. My hope that I don't end up in in her situation is Jesus Christ. Okay. Romans 10, 9 through 13. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your hearts God, uh, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It doesn't say maybe you'll be saved. You will be saved. For with, one, with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scriptures say, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. So Jew means people of God. Greek means the Roman world. The Roman thinking. The Rome, you know, there's no distinction. For the same Lord is, is Lord of all. So, even though people are, are, they don't want anything to be, do with God, he's still Lord over their life. He's still master, but he's a good master. He will take care of you. He will provide for you. He will house you. He will do everything for you if he wills it. See, and that Lord of all, there's no other gods before me. That's what it says in Exodus 20. Now, if you worship other gods, he will destroy you. If you don't worship other gods, he will take care of you. Uh, bestowing his riches on who? on all who call on his, on his name. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Not halfway saved, will be saved. That, and in Job 16, 21 through 22, this is our last verse, or yeah, last two verses, that he would argue the case of man with God. And he is Job. The, the he right there that you see, that's Job. Would argue the case of man with God. As a son of man does with his neighbor. For when a few years have come, I shall go the way from which I shall not return. So, yeah. This, I mean, Job went through the same thing. Same thing. So, if you people that don't believe in God, you're in slavery. You're slavery to your sin. You're slave to to your addictions. You're slave to your actions. Now I'm a slave too. Am I right, Mom? Mm -hmm. I'm a slave, but I have a good master. Yeah, I have a good master. He provided me this house and my car. My mom that loves me, a dog that loves me, two dogs that no, love two, me, <laughs> two dogs that love me, <laughs> friends that love me. That's a good master. 
Now, a bad master now, you're alone, you don't know where you're at, like them ladies, and I'm going to say ladies because it's proper, and you are totally alone. Matter of fact, I've been there, actually. Your addictions can be a, your slave master, slave driver. See, so if you don't want a slave master that that will keep you alone and all wrapped up into bad stuff for destruction, you need to come to Jesus. That is a good master. He will protect you. He will provide for you. But on the return, you have to worship him. You have to worship him because he is worthy of being praised and worshiped. You don't have the stove on, do you? No. Because I can smell something. Really um. Anyways, that's that's what I have for t tonight or uh, for this today. So just remember what was said in in this message this morning because I've been there, but not in the self the human trafficking, but I was affected by that. Yes, I was addicted to porno. I was addicted to video games. And you're like, wait a minute, then why do you have a, a Wii? Well, I can tell you why I have a Wii. I have ADHD. It helps me focus. See, but I'm not slave to my video games. See, I'm not slave to it. So if I miss a day, so what? This doesn't drive my life anymore. It helps me with my ADHD. See, that's that's where we need to get to God in our Amer in America and our world. We need to repent of our sins. Because there's a good master. His name is Jesus. He's a good master. He will take care of you. But if you want to be slave to your sin, that's okay too. But remember, there's consequ consequences of our sins. And you can't have it both ways. Straight up. So, I'm going to quit right here. Um, and we're going to be in uh, Job 17 uh, next, uh, next time. I'm not going to be doing uh, fa Facebook Live and U YouTube Live and Rumble Live until after VBS. So, um, that would be when, when Probably would Probably the weekend, uh, uh, the first weekend in, in uh, Let me uh, look August. here. So. It would be, it would be, it ends on the second, so it would be on the third. So, it, yeah. So, we're going to be going through the week. So, let me turn it around, turn it, and... So where we're going to be doing VBS is this whole week. So I will be doing live on the 10th um, because I have to study and all that. Or maybe, depending on what God wants me to do, um, we'll try to shoot for the third. We'll try to shoot for it. If not, then we'll do it on the tenth. So, so be uh, aware of um, 
of the lives. So, anyways, I will uh, talk to you guys later, but let's close up in prayer. And, uh, yeah, Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for your loving kindness, Lord. I pray that you would just speak to the people that are going to be watching. I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, speak to them. And uh, I pray for the kids that are going to be at VBS, that they would, um, that you would open their eyes to your truth and they would come to you, Lord Jesus, for salvation. I want to thank you and I praise you, God, for everything you've done. Thank you for a beautiful day and the wind and everything you've created. Praise you and you are worthy to be praised and worshiped in Jesus name amen so I will talk to you guys later and I will say bye for now and take right with Jesus see ya bye